For years, I've read the cover articles of Newsweekly magazines, and I've seen the television documentaries which quote historians and theologians as making two very familiar claims. Claim number one, that the Jesus we read about in the Bible is not the true Jesus of history. In other words, that Jesus is not divine, that he's just a man. Claim number two, that the Gospels that we have today are not trustworthy historic documents, that they were written to embellish the image of this preacher named Jesus and to make him look divine, and that the stories of his miracles and much of his teachings were simply an invention of the early church. Well, let me deal briefly with both of these. To begin, there are some people who say that Jesus actually never existed. Because Jesus' name does not appear in any first century document or on any inscription other than what we read in the Bible, then it's supposed that the reliability of what the Bible says about him cannot be verified. Of those people who admit that Jesus did exist, some claim that the stories of his sayings and miracles were entirely made up by early Christians simply to sell people on this new religion, Christianity. The claim has been made that the Gospels were not written to be historical books, but rather evangelical books. That is, they were meant to convert people to a new religion, and they were not meant to be accurate regarding the events and sayings found within their pages. Therefore, some people have assumed that the ancient church sacrificed accuracy for sensationalism and that the early Christians had no problem making up fictitious stories and teachings in order to spread their new faith. I disagree with both of these assumptions, not from a theological perspective, but from a scientific and an historic perspective. In fact, I'm going to go even further with you and give you three very bold counterclaims. Counterclaim number one. There is more historic manuscript evidence for the existence of Jesus than there is of Plato, Homer, Socrates, Buddha, Muhammad, Genghis Khan, Aristotle, or even Shakespeare. Counterclaim number two. We are more sure about the accuracy of Jesus' words than we are about the spoken words of any person in ancient history. Counterclaim number three. There are nine independent writers, including four historians, who write about Jesus in the first century. Those are some pretty bold claims, and there are ten reasons why they are true. Reason number one, the Bible is not a book. A common error that critics often make, and one that seems to be at the basis of their mistakes, is the assumption that the Bible is a single book. It is not. It's a library a library of books written over a 1,500-year period by at least 40 authors in three languages on three continents. The only thing common between these books is the fundamental theme that they all espouse, and it is a fact that the only reason they were canonized is because the church, at the grassroots level, considered them to be accurate and authoritative. Church officials eventually canonized these books because the majority of Christians all over the world had already done so. Which books were eventually going to be canonized was already a foregone conclusion. Let me go back to this notion about the Bible being just one book. There are 66 books in the Bible. If you had 66 books on your bookshelf, you would not consider them to be one book just because they were all on the same shelf. By the same token, the books of the Bible are not one book simply because of their proximity. They were merely collected to be a library of books, just like you collect books into your own library. The only difference between the Bible and your bookshelf is that the Bible is a closed library. That means that no other books are going to be admitted. The mistake of thinking of the Bible as a single book leads people to believe that the Bible is just a single source of information. But the Bible is not one source of information. Take the Gospels, for instance. The four Gospels must be received as four separate histories. This leads us to our second point. Reason number two. There are four first century historians who all write about Jesus. There are four Gospels written by four different men. Nowhere else in ancient history do we have four separate historians all writing about the exact same events and literally quoting the same historic figure. 
Now most of the time, modern historians will accept the reliability of some ancient event on the testimony of one historian. Two separate witnesses to the same event is considered to be an open and shut case for the accuracy of any historic event. Three witnesses is very rare, and four witnesses is extremely rare. This means that from a scientific or an historic perspective, the events of the Gospels should be virtually unquestioned. During the Roman era, so many so-called facts about secular history which are readily accepted by modern scholars, actually depend on the testimony of one or at the most two historic witnesses. In contrast, the story of Jesus is confirmed by no less than four separate historians. From a historic perspective, this is very big, and it makes the life and the sayings of Jesus the most reliable historic record of his day. Very few objective scientists would question the accuracy of the Gospels. Now, a person with something to prove might question their accuracy. And for anyone who questions the accuracy of the Gospels, you've got to look past their argument and ask what their true motivation is. Some people say, why don't we have any first century historians who attested the existence of Jesus? The fact is that we do. We have four of them. That is overwhelming historic evidence for the existence of Jesus. Reason number three, there are at least nine literary first century witnesses who write about Jesus, and as many as six eyewitnesses. Consider this, the four gospel writers are not the only first century witnesses to the events of the life of Jesus. There are five more canonized first century authors who all write letters about Jesus. They are the Apostle Paul, Peter, James, the brother of Jesus, Jude, another brother of Jesus, and the writer of Hebrews. The 21 letters written by these five authors were collected by early Christians and eventually added to what we call the New Testament. These letters were written during the same time that the Gospels were written, with not one of them contradicting, but rather supporting the validity of the sayings and the stories of Jesus. Among the five, like I said, were Peter, James, and Jude, who were supposedly all eyewitnesses to the deeds and words of Jesus. That's three eyewitnesses, plus the Apostle John, who was an eyewitness, plus Matthew and even Mark, who may have been eyewitnesses to some of the events. This means that it's possible that there were as many as six literary eyewitnesses. The evidence suggesting credibility is overwhelming. All of this put together makes a total of nine separate first century writers all saying the same thing. But there are approximately ten other Christian authors who didn't make it into the Bible, whose histories and letters could have been written as far back as the first century, all of them confirming that a powerful man named Jesus did walk on this earth. Here's one example. There's an ancient first century book called The Teaching of the Twelve Apostles. We know this book today as the Didache, which is Greek for teaching. We don't know who the author is, but some of the things that he says suggest that he was a Jew. And some scholars date this book as early as 50 AD. One thing we know for sure, the Didache was written during the same time that our canonized New Testament books were written. There are a lot of quotations of Jesus in the Didache, and virtually everything in it agrees with our canonized Gospels. So here you have nine New Testament authors who attest to the existence of Jesus, all of whom were alive during his lifetime, and possibly several other non-canonical first century books which provide the same witness. John gave us his gospel, letters, and revelation about 60 years after the events of the gospels, but still within the first century. The testimony of four independent first-century gospel historians and five other first-century New Testament witnesses is way beyond credible. From an historic perspective, this is enormous, and it makes the life and sayings of Jesus the most reliable historic record of his day. Anyone who casually denies this is in full denial of the facts. The fourth reason that the Gospels are accurate involves the evidence of written Gospels that predate our canonized New Testament Gospels. Luke says in Luke 1.1 1, 1, 
insofar as many have undertaken to compose a narrative about those matters which have been accomplished among us, even as they gave them over to us, who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Now, let's stop right there in the middle of the sentence and consider what he just said. This is clear evidence that our four gospel writers were not the only historians in the first century who testified about Jesus. Luke refers to other narratives that we don't have in our possession today, but we don't need them today. Luke included the most reliable of these narratives in his gospel. In fact, he claims that there were many such historians and that they were eyewitnesses. You see, very soon after the life of Christ, people who had known him apparently started writing, and much of what they wrote ended up in Luke's gospel. If Luke's gospel is merely a compilation of these documents, then it's obvious that this gospel represents a much older tradition than the actual date that Luke wrote it. In other words, in Luke's gospel, we are actually reading the accounts of people who personally eyewitnessed the events of Christ's life. This means that in our New Testament, the other Gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, and John, are all separate, independent historians. In contrast, Luke's Gospel admittedly represents the testimony of many historians. Therefore, to our nine New Testament witnesses, we can now add many others who all contributed to the composite of Luke's Gospel. This adds many witnesses to the nine that have already been named in the New Testament. Now, there's a fifth reason for the accuracy of the Gospels, and it has to do with the critical review of the Gospels by the Church. Think about this. The Gospels were written at a time when thousands of people who knew Jesus were still alive, and these Gospels would have been read and reread by many people who could have legitimately confirmed or denied their accuracy. In other words, the authors of the Gospels wouldn't have gotten away with making anything up. There were too many eyewitnesses critiquing their work. The reason that the Gospels were so aggressively distributed in the early years of the Church is because the community of early believers approved and confirmed the credibility and accuracy of the events described in them. Now the sixth reason that I believe in the accuracy of the Gospels is centered around this concept called the Gospel of Truth. One of the reasons that the early Christians did not fabricate stories about Jesus is because their new faith was based entirely on the foundation of a concept which over and over is called the truth. Take the Gospel of John for instance. Consistently John quotes Jesus as saying that he came to preach truth, John 14, 6. That he constantly told them the truth, John 8, 45. That they would be messengers of the truth, John 6:13 how absurd it would be for him to fabricate stories about a leader who himself was all about the truth. If John wanted to fabricate stories about what Jesus said and did, you wouldn't expect him to highlight Jesus' own emphasis on truthfulness as much as he did. The two don't go together. It doesn't make sense that he would lie about a message of truth. In the Gospel of John, it says twice that the person who is writing this Gospel is telling the truth. In John 19.35, it says, And he who has seen this has borne witness, and his witness is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth. Again, at the end of John's Gospel, in John 21.24, it says, This is the disciple who bears witness of these things and wrote these things, and we know that his witness is true. So even there you have the idea that what is written in this Gospel is not just believed to be the truth, but known to be the truth. In other words, it's really unlikely that John participated in fabricating lies while being a big advocate of the truth.